Someone once said, success in your 20s is more about setting the table than enjoying the feast. While I understand the thought process, I also understand that this sounds pretty sad. As someone about to hit his late 20s, I found that you can still sample and enjoy part of the feast as you set up the table. So when it comes to the financial goals to achieve in your 20s, it's about building and benefiting from healthy financial habits and getting rid of the bad ones. Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Andrew and I'm a certified public accountant and former financial analyst. And on this channel, we explore data-driven strategies to help us achieve financial independence. As cliche as it sounds, the first financial goal to achieve in your 20s is establishing an emergency fund. Unexpected life events happen oftentimes at what seems like the worst possible time, but an emergency fund acts as an insurance policy for your finances. A fully stocked emergency fund will help you avoid having to take out a loan or carry a balance on a credit card during a difficult time, whether it's dealing with a medical emergency, unexpected car repair, or a sudden job loss. When you set up an emergency fund, I recommend putting the money into a separate high yield savings account so that the money will grow gradually over time, but can still be accessed easily and quickly. As for the actual dollar amount put aside, you should shoot for around three to six months worth of living expenses at a minimum. If you're single with no kids and have a stable income, three months of living expenses should cover you for most emergencies, but if you have kids or earn a highly irregular income, I recommend shooting closer to six months. Although this might sound like a lot, the more you have saved, the more at ease you'll be if and when something unexpected actually occurs. Two, make and stick to a budget. While an emergency fund helps you prepare for all the unexpected expenses that might come your way, a budget prepares you for the expected expenses that will come. And so creating a budget is an important financial step that can help you get your finances in order and track how much money comes in and out of your bank account every month. While it may seem like a lot of work to create a budget, there are plenty of online resources and apps that can help you. And the good thing is, once you have one, the majority of the work is done and you only need to make small changes as your spending habits or income change. Now, after you create a budget, it's important to stick to it. This means regularly checking in with your budgeting goals and making sure you're not going over budget month to month. And if you share expenses with someone else, make sure you both have access to the budget and hold each other accountable. Three, pay off high interest debt. High interest debt is like a cloud hanging over your head. And unfortunately, those debts often grow faster than you expect, like a snowball rolling down a hill. By getting rid of them in your 20s, you're not just saving money, you're gaining a sense of financial freedom. While there is no strict definition for high interest debt, I classify it as anything above of the average interest rates for mortgages and student loans, which typically is around 5%. In order to get rid of your high interest debts, make a list of all of them, starting with the ones that have the highest interest rates. So for example, let's say you have three debts, a $2,000 balance with a 15% interest rate, a $3,000 balance with a 20% interest rate, and a $5,000 balance with a 10% interest rate. You would put the $3,000 balance with a 20% interest rate at the top, the $2,000 balance with a 15% interest rate second, and the $5,000 balance with a 10% interest rate third. You would then make minimum payments on all the debts except the one with the highest interest rate. You would throw as much extra money to that debt as you can until it's gone. Then take what you were paying on the highest interest debt and add that to your payment on the next highest interest debt until it's gone too. And repeat until each debt is paid in full. Four, getting a 760 plus credit score. Your credit score tells lenders about your credit worthiness, aka how likely you are to pay back a loan based on your credit history. Your credit score can fall anywhere between 300 to 850 and can be considered poor, fair, good, very good, or exceptional. Now the reason to shoot for a 760 credit score is because once you get to that level, you're already going to be getting the best rates and the lending options available. Think of it like getting an A in college. Whether you receive a 93 or 100, your GPA is the highest it can be at 4.0 regardless. Now in order to build credit, you have to have credit, and applying for a credit card is one way to start building credit history in your early 20s. As long as you 
pay off your entire balance on time and in full each month, you'll start to prove to lenders that you're a reliable borrower. Once you get the ball rolling, there are five main ways to strengthen your credit score, which are continuing to make your payments on time, using 30% or less of your total credit limit, keeping old lines of credit open, limiting how often you apply for new accounts, and adding to your credit mix. Your payment history is the largest factor in determining your FICO credit score at 35%, so you want to develop a long history of making on-time payments. For the purposes of your credit reports and the credit scores based on them, a late payment is one that's 30 days overdue. Now the margin for error on payment history is extremely low as 100% on-time payments is considered excellent, 99 is considered just good, and 97% is considered poor. Setting up automatic payments prior to your due date can help you avoid ever missing a payment. Just make sure you're always spending less than what's actually in your bank account so that you don't incur any overdraft fees. Your credit utilization or amounts owed is the next largest component, which is the amount you currently owe relative to the credit you have available. Lenders typically like to see your credit utilization ratio stay below 30%, but the lower the better. In fact, the highest scores tend to have credit utilization in the single digits. Now, the longer your credit accounts have been open and in good standing, the better. Lenders view someone who has never been late with a payment for 10 years as a lower risk than someone who has been making on-time payments for only two years. Applying for new accounts can be a double-edged sword. On the one hand, you want to gradually build your credit file to increase your total credit limit. On the other hand, every time you submit a credit application, it can lead to a hard inquiry, which can temporarily lower your credit score. So if you apply for credit frequently, this will lead to several hard inquiries in a short period of time, which can have a compounding effect on your credit score in a negative way. Lastly, an additional credit account in good standing can help your credit, particularly if it is the type of credit you don't already have. Lenders like to see a healthy credit mix that shows you can successfully manage different types of credit. Leveraging both revolving credit such as credit cards or lines of credit as well as installment credit such as mortgages, auto loans, and student loans is preferred. By focusing on these five strategies, your credit score will continue to rise over time and reach 760 in just a few years. Five, investing in your career. The average person spends about 90,000 hours or one third of their life at work. I know, I had the same reaction when I found this stat. If that truly is the case, it's crucial in your 20s to choose a career that you might actually enjoy that will also pay you handsomely because nobody wants to spend 90,000 hours of their life working for ridiculously low pay. Once you choose a career path that has the potential to make a lot of money, it's important in your 20s to make sure you are building skills, knowledge, relationships, and experiences that will make you a desirable asset in whatever field you choose. That can be taking trainings or courses, seeking a mentor, building your professional network, or getting a higher level of education. It's important in your 20s to make yourself valuable and have a reputation of being reliable and diligent. If you're curious to learn about various career opportunities within business, finance, or accounting, make sure to subscribe and check out some of my other videos linked down in the description. Six, start building multiple sources of income. Your nine to five job doesn't have to be your only source of income. In your 20s, especially your early 20s, you most likely don't have kids to take care of, which makes it the best time to invest some of your spare time into creative work that can earn you some extra cash. A lot of times, these side hustles can start by looking at your hobbies or skills and finding a way to monetize them. For example, if you enjoy photography, while you most definitely won't be in the market for a wedding gig, there are plenty of small opportunities like graduation photos or photos for a social media page that can earn you a few hundred or even thousands of dollars a month. Upwork and Fiverr also provide easy opportunities to become a freelancer for all sorts of different gigs, and so the more skilled or knowledgeable you are at something, the easier you can stick out and the more you can charge for your services. Even if you don't feel like you have any skills to leverage right now, you can always learn new skills like video editing, writing, or website design 
which are all desired skills in today's society. And seven, investing for the future. Investing is like planting seeds that grow over time. And your 20s are the perfect season for planning since your money has more time to grow and flourish. Just as how your past experiences impact who you become, investments impact your financial future. And the great thing is you don't need a lot of money to start investing. Investing with smaller dollar amounts is possible now more than ever thanks to low or no investment minimums, no commissions, and fractional shares. There are plenty of investments available for relatively small amounts such as index funds, exchange traded funds, and mutual funds. And yes, even small consistent investments can make a big difference over time thanks to the magic of compound compound interest, which simply means your investment returns start earning their own returns. To illustrate the effect of compound interest over time, let's compare two people, one who starts investing at 20 and another at 30. Both of them invest $100 per month and earn a 7% annual return, which is the average return of the S&P 500. By the time they both turn 60, the person who started investing at 20 would have invested a total of $54,000 which would have turned into $379,259. The person who started investing at 30 would have invested a total of $42,000 and only grown to $180,105. By starting 10 years earlier, the first person's account grew by over $325,000, while the investor who started at 30 earned only about $138,000. When it comes to investing, I like to think of it in two ways, saving for retirement and investing to build wealth. The goal of retirement savings is to simply accumulate enough money so that you don't run out of it before you die. In the US, there are two main types of retirement accounts, 401ks and IRAs. A 401k plan is a tax advantage employer-sponsored retirement savings plan. One main benefit of this account is that many corporations offer an employer match to your 401k contributions, typically a percentage of your contributions up to a specific portion of your total salary, or simply just up to a certain dollar amount. Either way, an employer match is essentially free money that you should always take advantage of. Now, an IRA or individual retirement account is a tax advantage savings account that individuals with earned income can use to save for retirement. The IRA was primarily designed for self-employed people who don't have access to employer-sponsored retirement accounts like the 401k. However, anyone with a workplace retirement plan can also open an IRA account and invest additional savings to it. When it comes to what you should actually invest in within your retirement accounts, I recommend investing in mutual funds or exchange traded funds with extremely low expense ratios. This will allow for better diversification and fewer fees paid and thus over the long term better results. Now the goal of investing to build wealth is to become financially independent and secure your own freedom as early as possible regardless of how long you're fortunate enough to live. This can be done by investing in individual stocks, bonds, mutual funds, crypto, precious metals, real estate, etc. But before you invest, it's important to fully understand what you're investing in, the risks associated with that type of investment, and how to value investments in that asset class. For example, if you're looking to invest in individual stocks, it's important to learn about the stock market, so click here for a full beginner's guide to stock investing. And now that's all for this video. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.